Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Straight of Gamia. Today, I have a very special guest, the youngest politician <laughs> and uh, the youngest national secretary general of the biggest political party in the Gambia, United Democratic Party, Kemo Boja. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Buba. And, um, it's a pleasure to be here and be able to talk to you and share ideas. Great. Can you tell your viewers a little about yourself? Um, my name is Kemo Bojang, as you said. I'm a young Gambian, passionate from humble beginnings, from Bakao, so you could call it the slums, Bakao Dinkokona. Mm -hmm. um, grew up like any average young Gambian, um, from a conservative background, as my, one of my grandparents was an imam, and the other one was, you know, um, a typical Mandinka man. Mm -hmm. So you could imagine in a type of um, society that I, that I grew up in, but I was fortunate to also grow up where my dad was working, which is the SOS Children's Village, where oh. he was the director. So we grew up around a community of over 100 plus children that we shared everything together from clothing, food. And I believe this has been one of my biggest inspirations and has been able to mold me into the person I am today. And as you said, um, I am a young politician and I term to call myself a progressive young politician. Um, the National Youth Secretary General of the United Democratic Party's Youth Wing and also a, a councillor with the KMC. I am, I am also the youth advisor to Mayor Talib Ahmed Ben Souda, or, um, the mayor of the Kanifi Municipal Council. Great. Uh, you've got appointed as the youth representative at the Kanifi Municipal Council. Before that appointment, how did your political journey start? Yes, um, I, my dad was also a politician and he, not only him, but I grew up in a family of politicians. Uh, my uncle is also a politician, my grandfather was a politician and actually was in prison in 1981 after the uh, Kukoi Samasanyang coup. Wow. Um, he was a staunch, um, he was one of the El Keba Kafo of the NCP then. And he was the imam, the, 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 the famous imam that walked all the way from Joshuang to Radio Gambia to tell Jawarako funding Kele Bang Wow. You know, so you can imagine from a family that I came from. And Sharif Mustafa Adiba is also a, um, a, grand, um, a grandparent of mine, distant grandparent. Um, my dad was also a campaign manager for the NCP. Um, so my family has been an opposition um, family, you could say, and the NCP was. Um, office, I would call it, was in our compound, um, in our Kabilo, Bakauta, Makunda. So we've had a strong sense of belongingness to politics. And when the UDP came up, we used to have or Bakau in um, the meetings in Bakau were held in our compound. So technically, as political scientists would say, the political culture and socialization you have, the main factor is your family. Oh yeah. So I grew up in a political family, and these were things that I, you know, I started on doing. But also, I did a lot of voluntary work um, with the likes of Gambia Red Cross Society, the Duke of Edinburgh's Award, the President International Award, um, the Gambia Scout Association, and other um, organizations. So this also helped me civic educate myself, be able to know what we are right and what we are wrong. And I also got exposed to a lot of reading material growing up. So I wrote, a, wrote and, and read a lot about Pan-Africanism, governance, politics, and other things. So I would say at the age of 14, I was very much involved in politics. And that was my high school time. I was very involved in politics. Uh, I'm sorry, the age of 16, I'd say, sorry. I was in, uh, very involved in politics. Um, I, I would get in trouble in school for questioning most of the things that were happening in the country at the time and that my teachers didn't want to talk about it. So these and many more were the reasons why, you know, that, oh, that has been able to mold my political opinion, and today I found myself as being the youngest ever elected National Youth Secretary General of the UDP, and also a local government councillor. And I chose local government because I believe that as a young person in politics, you do not just spring up. Mm -hmm. You have to start somewhere, and local yeah. government councils are the closest to the grassroots, yeah. and this is where you get direct contact with the community. And I thought it's a good place to start and see how things fold out. But we all have aims and objectives in life, and with time we would like to grow within the political ladder and be able to learn from the elders also and inject our own youth, youth, um, youth power in it and see where we will be able to catapult our country. Great. Essentially, you've been a young and a very energetic opposition 
to bad governance in this country. Yeah. Because uh, it is hard to imagine a young Gambian of maybe 19 to 20 years, 21 years, fighting dictatorship in this country. Because uh, I'm a living witness to that. To your credit, I remember the day we conducted a referendum at the university. We shared we are not going on with our lecture-related activities unless President Jame respect the verdict of the people and return the power, relinquish the power to the pres then president-elect Adam Obago. Mm -hmm. And uh, several calls were made. You were called by a no number, and you showed it to me. And we were all like, wow, it could be NIA. We were all kind of scared because growing up, but we still went ahead with our, with our, with our project. And I think two days later, we've organize a conference at the law school where we invite uh, different political parties and CSOs. I can say that was the day when Gambia's Dirtisat was widely distributed in this um, country. I mean, I think that was the day it was even launched. Launch, yeah, say, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and uh, you were searched by the NIA. Yeah. Yeah, because going down to pick some t shirt I met the NIA and they thought I was you and they nearly got me arrested. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. and you escaped. Mm -hmm and came back and joined the struggle. Yeah. Uh, for, me, um, for me, it's more of a social responsibility. Um, we saw it as a moral call. As young Gambians, I didn't want my children to grow up in a situation or in a position I grew up in. I have been exposed to first-hand dictatorship, and we all have been exposed to first-hand dictatorship. And we know how tough it could be growing up in an area where you have been enclosed like a bird in a cage so, or a fish in an aquarium. And this was not what we wanted the next generation to feel. So um, we took it upon ourselves as young people to free our country. And not because we wanted to do so, but we saw elders who had already portrayed and showed us examples <coughs> which were inspiring. So, um, April 14, for example, the likes of Solo Sunday. April 16, the likes of Hussein Odabo and Co. You go to May 9th, which was the Kalamari Revolution led by gallant women. And even before these things, um, there were, there were um, political parties and pressure groups and civil societies have, have always made a stand, and mm -hmm. even though it was not a very strong one. But we are happy to be the generation that ushered in this new change. And right. for me, um, it was something that I saw as, as a responsibility. And at the time, I thought it was either you were against the system or silence meant you were supporting the system. Silence meant consent. Yeah, so we couldn't afford silence at the time. And we didn't have any weapons, but we had social media. We had our, um, our skills to write. We had, had, we had gained knowledge from, from the little books that we have read, from the little exposure we have had from traveling around the world. So we knew what other countries were, were, were enjoying, and we saw no reason why, as young people of this country, we couldn't enjoy the same luxuries as young people in other countries were enjoying, even just next door neighbors here, Senegal. So these were some of the inspirations we had, and we made sure that we had to do it. And coming on to the University of the Gambia and how we, we were able to um, work with our pact of influential lecturers and, and brought in, or, or if I could say, we started the, the sit-down strikes of institutions. So I think this would go down in history as one of the most significant impacts that young people of this country have done. Yes, ingenious. Yes, and even before that, I and a few other young people wrote to opposition party leaders, which was published by newspapers in this country, asking them to form a coalition. And whenever I see the reminders on, so, on social media, it, it gives me goosebumps, but it's also yeah. inspiring that so. we have been able to do this regardless of our age. But we saw to it that our country needed us and we had to be there for them. And I am happy that today we are both able to sit here today and talk about these things because it would have been a different story if you know, we, we didn't succeed. But we didn't do it for, for ourselves, we did it for the unborn generations that are yet to come. That they will look back and say, there was a generation that took the risk so that we would be free today. Great, because uh, the idea was growing up, we want to break the silent, mm -hmm. you know. We want to make sure that we are armed with courage and determination to have a breakaway with that dictatorship in this country because uh, we have seen how people were unlawfully tortured, how people were killed, the likes of data because of free, lack of free press. And today we are here narrating our success story in the struggle. Mm -hmm. So we thank God and we say congratulations to anyone who took part in the struggle. And 
you've made a paradigm shift from activism to politics, yeah. from being a youngest <coughs> and strongest, you know, <laughs> activist in this country. Now you turn to be a politician. Now we call you baby counselor, young counselor. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you are now in the system. What have you done for the young people? Yes, um, we, the shift was necessary, but it's also important to note, like I said, that I have always been a politician, but it was the circumstances that I found myself in that made me have that shift from politics to activism. But I've always been a political activist or politician activist, one could call it, because I was part of my ward national and uh, award executive committee for the party at the age of 14 to 16 years mm -hmm. so it tells you that i started really early but um after the whole change happened i realized that we were calling for a lot of reforms we were calling for youth empowerment we were calling for youth participation in politics but the young people were not coming out to participate we were sitting in our comfort zones and continuing to ask for these things and knowing politics and how it's played, I realized that it would never be handed to us on a silver platter. So. And it was necessary for us to get up and ask for and demand for what we thought was ours. And I thought to, to, to myself, you know, you can be outside and talk about a lot of ills that are happening within the system. But what if you got into the system and tried to make at least your own change and what you Adjustment. believed was wrong in with the system? So I believe that there was uh, not enough youth participation. I believe that there was not enough youth uh, um, um, inclusion in politics. I believe that our public offices were mostly not effective. And I saw an opening which, you know, um, we, I thought I was qualified for. I contested for it and alhamdulillah that I, I got it. So um, some of the success stories that we have been able to make is that we have been able to create representation for young people. Before I got into the position, I never knew that there was a youth council position for say. Um, before I got into the position, I never knew that there was even within the, the framework of local government that the mayor had a youth advisor. Yeah. So we have been able to create this, um, this representation for young people, I think, which is mostly important. The second thing we did was we planned and we are working on how do we create that link between the mayor's office and the KMC as an institution with our grassroots. And this we have been able to do by w making sure that in every ward development committee within the wards of KMC, we have a youth representative in all of them, wh whom I have a meeting with at least once every month. Is it regardless of the political party yes, that those people belong to? Yes, we, I do not even ask them which political party they come from because they represent, for myself, even though I, I am a member of the United Democratic Party's executive committee, once I get into the Carnival Municipal Council, I represent every young person in this municipality. How, do we, how are you able to manage that? Yeah. Being an executive of one of the biggest political parties and being a youth representative in a city council. Yeah, you make sure that conflict of interest never surfaces, which is one. And you always understand that before, before 1996, there was no UDP. And, but there were Gambians yeah. and there was KMC. Sensible. So this is what you have to also understand that regardless uh, your political uh, um, um, affiliation, you represent everyone. For example, I do not ask anybody the political affiliation you come from when it comes to um, uh, when you are at KMC to ask for anything from my office. For example, our initiatives, we do not ask for any political affiliation. We give depending on the need and based on equity basis. And we also look at uh, um, the, the best and the competent when, when, um, when we are doing most of our things. So what's the greatest youth initiative that you oversee that you are more proud of? I think would be my 20 million youth fund. Uh, we have been able to launch a 20 million youth fund for young entrepreneurs through my office. And just a few days ago, we also handed out um, 1 million to three youth em uh, entrepreneurs based on COVID-19. Um, who have innovative ideas, and one was Le Jumbo, the other was yeah. Gisco, and the other one was, I uh, forgot the name of the yeah. last company, um, Outboost Company. Outboost. Um, one is in um, e-commerce, the other is in education, and the other is in um, transport and advertising. So these are some of the things. We have also been able to set up the biggest prize money competition, which is wow. the Mayor's <laughs> Tournament, where the winning team gets 150,000 dollars, which is to boost grassroots football or grassroots sports. Um, the first edition we had last year, we are working on the second edition, where we focus on only grassroots, no first division or second division players are allowed to play. But we want to 
make it a space where people with skills cause, um, and, and talent like football will be able to showcase. And I'm happy to say that some of those players have gone on to play for Gambia's first division teams. Some of them are currently in Senegal on trial and other countries. So at least we were also able to create that environment for them. And when it comes to our employment as a council, we have been able to provide employment for at least 360 young people within the KMC conference wow. through our Mbali project and our municipal police which we made sure that we passed the resolution that 99% of the employees would be young people. From there, we have also provided employment for over 700 indirectly through our drainage projects, through our other projects that we give, um, which are contract-based. So these are all avenues that we have been able to create um, employment for the young people. Um, going further, we were also able to set up the Interparty Youth Committee through my KMYC, which is the Canada Youth Municipal Council. Where, because we know KMC is a hotbed for political violence. Sure. So going back to the impartiality I was talking about, yeah. um, we were able to set up a um, um, inter-party youth committee for, for the region, where we have youth represented, two youth representatives from each political party um, to, ha um, to be there. And we have been able to work and have initiatives like wrestling peace competitions, mm. peace concerts, where we advocate for political um, um, cohesion and political, you know, um, 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 peace and other things. So these are all um, initiatives that we have come up with where we, we have been able to make sure that we engage young people. Um, now also, um, in the past, I also, for almost a year, I was a constant guest of a TV show on, on a TV station yeah. called The Youth Dialogue, where I go there and talk to young people every week to tell them what we have been able to work on and some of the things that we are doing. And, and the good thing is that I was having feedbacks from them. And I've been able to also do a youth tour where I round the whole municipality and spoke to young people. Um, I spoke to them about some of the projects that we have and some of the things that we're working on. So these and many other things are some of the things that we have been able to do um, with our meager resources. And we have been able to also help when it comes to giving out donations to youth groups and other things. And we have seen a jump of number of groups uh, or youth associations within the Canopy Municipal Council from when we came and where we are now, we have had almost a 40% increase of youth groups. And we have been able to also raise the youth budget from $350,000 to $1.2 million wow. um, when we came into the council. So this shows that we are a youth-oriented council. Um, we have been able to support youth projects. And looking at our council, we have a very youthful council. Myself as the councillor and also um, having the mayor as the youngest mayor. And me as the youngest councillor says a lot about yeah. um, the setup of our, our our municipal council. Great. Uh, it's definitely so beautiful to know that the council is not only limited to service delivery, but mm -hmm. also trying to support the young people with great economic empowerment programs. Mm -hmm. That's great. But now we are going to move a little bit from your work as a youth councillor of the KMC to your position as a youth secretary general of the United Democratic Party. What is the state of preparedness of the United Democratic Party in the face of the 2021 elections? Yeah. Um, the message is clear, the message is single. It is change and we are adamant and we are, we are ready to give the change that the Gambian people deserve. And we see ourselves as the party that can salvage this country from the crunches that we are in at the moment. Um, we have the people, we have the quality, we have the quantity, we have the ability to also make sure that all the plans and policies that, and, and programs we have in place will be able to transform the lives of the Gambian people. Great, but uh, critics say yeah. youth being the greatest political party, but President Bago, who has been the treasurer of the United Democratic Party, uh, form his own political party, the, PP, the NPP, yeah. National People's Party. And people suggest that this will definitely limit the chances of the United Democratic Party to make it to presidency in 2021. Yeah. What's your reaction to um, that? The president is the commander in chief of the Gambia, and he has the right to form his own political party if he wishes so. What we know is that we are not focused on what other political parties are doing. We are focused on how do we improve um, our own party and how do we encourage more people to join our party. Um, this is based on a lot of things that we believe that we would be able to make the change that we want, considering that we have been able to place or give out the most 
or the best programs when it comes to the economy of the country, looking at our taxation methods, looking at our tax breaks that we want to give, looking at other um, avenues that we want to empower and, 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 and work on our economies. You look, at, you look at our governance structures and other things. Um, if the people believe that other political parties are, are also a threat to the United Democratic Party, I believe every political party is a threat to the UDP because I believe that we all have the same aim, aims and agendas. But we believe that our, um, our ways of working towards that goal is what's different. But one thing I know is that I think we have shown our capabilities, be it from the last presidential elections, coming down to the National Assembly elections, coming down to the area council elections, and also councilship elections. We have been able to control all avenues of power in this country. And this just shows one thing, and it shows one thing that the people, the Gambian people believe in our message. The Gambian people believe that we would be able to salvage them, and they would continue to support and vote for us. I am just not um, very much I'm satisfied with the, the, um, the thoughts of people and why don't they think that other parties will be threats? Why is it that NPP is the only threat that, that we would face a, as a political party? Good. So their judgment is President Barrow is from the United Democratic Party and obviously he's also got some loyalists. You know, mm -hmm. there are people who will go with President Barrow and they're from UDP and this could be a great section. Yeah. This is their fear. Yeah. Well, this is the judgment. Well, I, I, I would just like to say that the same reason President Barrow and those people joined the United Democratic Party is the same reason why up till today we have more people joining the United Democratic Party. The party they left behind is still the party it is today. And with or without them, we have seen the likes of people of caliber like Olidi Bawada, who have left a job at the African Development Bank as the head of a whole section to come and join the United Democratic Party because they see it as the body that will be able to salvage our country. So the United Democratic Party, and we would always stick to what we, or where we are. And people would come and go, but the party would stay and remain because we are true to our beliefs, we are true to our con um, conscience, and we will continue to do what we have to do in the best interest of this country. And whoever feels that our interest is not what you align to again, uh, now or what you al al align to, I think you have to be able to check yourself and realize that Probably I have been, or I have not been honest to myself because we have all seen what the party has been able to sacrifice for this country and where we are today. So if you feel that your alignment is no more with the party, then your alignment is no more with the country, but your alignment is with something else. Okay, so uh, considering the fact that the incumbency goes with a lot of advantages, mm -hmm. you still think that you can build President Borough? Oh yes, I think, I think we can beat anybody who stands in our way to the state house because we have the numbers, we have the quality, we have the plans and policies that we want to empower young people, we want to empower women, we have seen what our local government councils are doing and looking at the work of our local government councils, especially Banjul, um, become, uh, Banjul KMC and um, LRR, um, you realize that most of our initiatives are almost the same initiatives. And this is because it comes from the party's local government framework that we are very focused on women and youth empowerment um, through entrepreneurship, through leadership qualities, and also building, building the human capital of, of our people. And these are things that we would want to translate when we get to the national stage. And just a few weeks ago, um, the IRI, conducted a survey, which was conducted by a non-partisan group. And the, the results showed that the UDP was ahead of the president, even though with, with his incumbency, we still beat him with some percentages. So it says a lot about um, um, where we stand as a party, and it says a lot about where the president stands. OK. Uh, people say UDP is an angry party because they've dismissed eight as assembly members from their party because they think those people are with Barrow and not serving the party agenda. Mm -hmm. And also the argument that the become area council chairman is dismissed from the party and the, 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 the drama is still going on is as a result of the anger and frustration that you know your people, you know, the, the, the prime elements of your party are shifting allegiance to President Barrow. Is that the case? Um, first of all, they are not prime elements. Um, the prime elements of the party are, we believe, are the core supporters of the party. We, in the positions of authority within the party, do not see ourselves as the brand of the party. But the average 
Gambian, the supporter who walks from um, the Bandur International Airport all the way to Pipeline, is who we see as our prime elements within our party. Going further, we, like I said, our agenda as a party is the agenda of the country. So if you don't align by our agenda, we see no reason why you should be in our party, because we do not believe that you have the country at heart. Going further also, when you were joining the party, you had to as ascribe to a set of rules and regulations, or a term of reference. Once you do not hold on to this term of reference, I see no reason why you should continue being within the party ranks. Um, it's basic, I think it's basic common sense that even, for example, it's like me taking you on a contract and then you do not do what you are supposed to do. Do I still keep you? For what reason? No. But how about <clears throat> the, 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 the people, these politicians, okay, let me put this this way. Uh, if you do not go by the agendas of the United Democratic Party, if you don't push the agenda of the United Democratic Party, you're going to be kicked out. But these people align themselves to President Pago. They think President Pago is the is the, uh, he's the president of this country. Yeah. And the United Democratic Party is a political party that we all belong to. But he's a president, we're going to support his agenda of nation building. So why is, why, why is the confusion? Yeah, because why uh, is the contradiction? Yes, um, one I think is also important we note. Um, going to your first question, uh, people calling us uh, an angry party. I do not think we are an angry party. I think we are a passionate party. We are passionate about our political party, we are passionate about this country. We love this country from the bottom of our hearts. We have given sweat, we have given blood, and we have given time in prison and exile to see that our country is free. So I think it will be unreasonable, I think it will be uh, um, dishonesty, I think it will be insensitive to call a political party who has given up all of what it, um, it has had for this country to be free, to be called angry because there are few people within the ranks of the party who do not adhere to the rules and regulations. Every institution has rules and regulations. And if you do not adhere to these rules and regulations, you have to be disciplined. And this is what the political um, the party is doing within the UDP. All I see is, uh, um, um, is an institution um, 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 drive taking place. What I see is a mechanism that's working. And I think it is always necessary to put discipline within the ranks of any institution or organization. And going further, um, talking about the, 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 the agenda of the president, I would always want to ask, what is the agenda of the president? And they say national development plan. But who, the, uh, who, um, the national development plan, what has been able, uh, what have we achieved from the national development plan? The eight points, for example, what have we been able to achieve from the national development plan? Nobody can tell me what we have been able to achieve. Even the national development plan they're talking about. Who, under whose tenure as Minister of uh, Finance, under whose tenure as Minister of Foreign Affairs well, was the Gambia able to get all of that 1.4 billion that we are talking about? From 2018 to date, when the, the, the former president, Honorable Hussein Dabo and Ahmadou Sani and Lamin Dibo were sacked from this government, what have we been able to achieve as a country? I keep asking this question. Well, I have where the annual progressive report of the National Development Plan, that is 2018. And I can say on the record that there are significant <coughs> progress made. Yeah. But according to argument, you yeah. want to suggest that it's because United Democratic Party officials were there. I, 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 I not would say that United Democratic Party, but I believe that Gambians who had their country at heart were there and they wanted to see a progressive country like, like we all want to see. But when you look at I, I believe it's, it's like a, um, when people have put in time and effort into something that they want to see, and you are somebody who has branded yourself as somebody who wants to also achieve that same goal. If you do not work with them, it's very hard to be able to achieve those goals because they are the brains and masterminds behind the goal. So how will you rate President Barrow's performance? Um, I think I'll, I will give him After a 35. Years. I'll give him a 35. 35? Yes, um, unfortunately. Great. But, but, yeah. So what do you have to say to the young people? Um, I'd like to say to the young people that it is our time to take part in politics. Um, we are people that this country depends on. We make up 60% or 60% plus of the population. We cannot continue to leave our elders to suffer. They have suffered enough. It is time that we bring young ingenuity. It is time that we bring young energy. It is time that we bring innovative ideas on the table. But we must also understand that this cannot be also done without the wisdom of our elders. And it needs to be a process where we take over. It's not a coup d'etat. It's not something where today we just um, 
get them off and then we come on. It, it has to be a process. Because even institutions that fail is because they, there is no institutional history. We want to learn from them. We want to bring in um, our own ideas, but it needs to be a mix and blend. I'll continue to urge young people to take part in politics. I'll continue to urge young people to take part in national development. As we uh, are the creme de la creme, as the French would say, of this country. And it's, it's, it's also beautiful to see young people like yourself doing something as beautiful as this and having such initiatives where other young people can come and share their ideas and see how best we can move this country forward. Thank you. That's Kemo Bojang, Youth Secretary General of United Democratic Party. Thank you for coming by. Thank you very much. Great. <laughs>